excuse me. Ethan Winthrop. Hi, sweetheart. I thought Teresa was holding this morning in the mansion. Well, she changed her mind at the last minute. But I couldn't bear to wake you up and tell you before I left. It's so beautiful and serene sound asleep. Because I'm happy, Ethan. You make me very happy. Well, I'm glad. So, how is it going? Well, all right, I guess. Frankly, I'm surprised that Teresa didn't reschedule the meeting for next week. I mean, she knows how much is riding on winning this contract. She can barely keep her eyes open. Is it that obvious? Well, to me it is. I think the only way we're going to push this deal through is if I can keep the MPS people from noticing how off she is today. You're even pretty when you yawn. Oh, Fox. Stop flirting with me and tell me if you think Ethan's mad at me today. Is that all you ever think about? My newly married half-brother? Stop judging me and tell me what you think. Okay. Yeah, I, I sense a distinct chill in the air between you two. Mm. Well, it's hardly a surprise in light of the fact that you, you threw our crippled mother out of her own home and into a raging blizzard last night. Aside from that, Sure, he thinks the world of you. Fox. Well, come on. Of course he's less than thrilled with you today. I mean, what do you expect? Well, I expect him to get over it once he realizes the kind of woman his mother really is. I'm sorry. I, I keep forgetting that she's your mother, too. No. No, no need to apologize. I mean, she never really remembered it either, so... Well, if I feel guilty about anything... It's sending Ivy straight to the Bennett's house last night, where I'm sure that she's making Grace Bennett's life hell on earth. Well, I don't know, Mrs. Bennett, but uh, there aren't many women in the world who are a match for my mother. Yeah, well, that's what I'm worried about. But Grace is smart. You know, and if there is any justice in this world, I'm sure she's booted your ice queen mother out of the house the night I tossed Ivy out. Where's Ivy? I haven't seen her since we left Tabitha's. And with any luck, she's out looking for some place to live. In a wheelchair? I doubt it. Well, no matter. That's what I'm doing now online. Looking for assisted living apartments for her to move to. I want that woman out of my house by the end of the day, Sam. <laughs> Ooh, I always knew that Phyllis was lazier than a box turtle. Now I'm going to have to arrange to have all of my things sent to Sam's house by myself. Oh, I do love sleeping under the same roof as you, darling, but I need my 600 count sheets. Grace's must be made out of sackcloth. I might as well take all my clothes, too. I want to look my best for Sam. is going on, Rebecca? They said that there's a chance that the drug would work and it would cure you completely, return you to a normal and healthy life. The last thing that I wanted for you was this, to be trapped in a shell of yourself, unable to move or talk I can't believe this is it. It would have been better if he just died. Don't say that. Don't ever say that. He can't move, Mama. He can't talk. He can't even think. Well, well there's life, there's hope, mijo. Look, the medical profession is finding cures every day, and, and we just have to pray that they'll find something to help Antonio. In the meantime, he won't be alone. He, he'll have his wife to sit by him day and night. Right, Sheridan? I made a promise. As long as Antonio needs me, I'll be by his side. Even if that means forever. Oh, happy day. 
long as Antonio's got the brain cells of a turnip, Sheridan will never get back with Luis, which makes him all mine. What do you think about having Cook send our dinner to our room tonight? <sighs> that sounds perfect. We could shut out the rest of the world. Just the two of us. Quiet. Romantic. <laughs> okay, you too. So, the meeting's going well, don't you think? Well, it could be better. You really have to try to stay on your toes, Teresa. Ethan, I, I mean, I, I am a little tired, yes, but I know what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, well, look, break's over, so we better round everyone up, get them to their seats. What was I right or was I right? About what? Well, Ethan doesn't look to me like the kind of guy who's uh, going to forget what you did to dear old Mumsy last night. I mean, not to mention the fact that he's, he's married to someone who's not you. Shut up, will you, Fox? <laughs> Teresa, I warned you, okay? You went too far this time. You're never gonna have anything but an icy working relationship with my half-brother because the guy's never gonna forgive you for what you did. Well, Rebecca, I asked you a question. What are you doing with my clothes? Uh, uh, well, you don't have to snap my head off. There's a very simple explanation. Which I'm dying to hear. Look, for your information, I was just helping Phyllis to pack up some of your things to send over to you. What? What did you think I was doing? Well, stealing me blind popped into my head. <sighs> Whatever. Take what you want. What? I mean it. What do I care about my furs and my gowns now that I'm living in the same house with a man I love? I cannot even believe that you want to spend one night in a house that size. You told me they don't even have a maid. So what? Uh, I'll wash the clothes. I'll even vacuum the floors all day if it means being near Sam. And now that I've moved into his house, there's no way I'm leaving. Grace, it's in the middle of winter. We just can't throw Ivy out in the cold. Look, Sam, I'm not. Look, right here, here's an apartment building. It's on Orchard Street. It's even got wheelchair access. Ivy's not going to stay there. Well, she's not going to stay here. You know, Sam, I'm a little confused. It was one thing for her to spend the night here last night when she had nowhere else to go. She still doesn't. That is because I seem to be the only one who's looking for another place. You think there's a reason for that? Let me ask you a question first. I mean, do you still think Ivy is plotting to tear us apart even after Kay apologized for making those accusations? I mean, she said that she was wrong about Ivy and David plotting to tear us apart. Okay, I am not going to say that Ivy is actively plotting to tear us apart. However, that doesn't mean that she wouldn't be happy to see us split up. And I don't want that kind of negativity in my house. Look, Sam, I, I, I just... I want to find some place that's nice that she can stay or someone will take care of her. I mean, anywhere but here. I just hate to force her out like this. It's... Sam, we're not. You know what? We've got enough on our plate already without Ivy living right under our noses. I mean, how about our pregnant, unwed daughter that is living out of the house? Look, I want Kay home, too. No, well, it's not just Kay. I mean, you and I have been through hell and back lately. I really think we need some private time alone, you know, together. Grace, We're going to make our marriage work. I couldn't agree more. Then great. You know what? It's time to get rid of all these outside distractions. It's time to get rid of people and things that are trying to come between us. And that means Ivy moving out of the house. I'm trying to stay positive. I can't stop thinking about all the things Antonio will miss. Mama. Home. He'll never be able to hold his firstborn child in his arms. Or see the sun rise, or set again, or go for a walk on the beach. We were going to get season tickets to see the Red Sox play next summer. He will be missed so much as a brother. 
a son. As a husband. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you're going to be so alone. Phyllis was going to pack up Ivy's thing. Uh, can't a person help an overworked servant without everyone accusing them of I don't know what? You, you were helping the maid. <laughs> Never mind about that. How are you doing? I am fine. No morning sickness today. How are you doing after last night? Hmm. Well, she's on top of the world, if you can imagine enjoying spending time on that side of town. The Bennett home, you mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She says she's in her glory, staying under the same roof as Chief Bennett. I, though, am highly skeptical. And there's no room service, no servants, and... Ooh, do they even have more than one bathroom? Oh, Rebecca, I told you I don't care about any of that. Since when? Since I can be near the man I love. I would live in a cave with Sam if that were his home. That's how much I love him. <laughs> what a crock! I don't believe her. Oh, please. Mother, I do, because it's the same way I feel about Ethan. I would live under a bridge with him if I had to. That's how much I love him. Now, you can see how Crane's numbers went way up in the last quarter of 2002. And Teresa has the tear sheets on that. Teresa? Right. Yes, I do. Um, uh, ah. There they are. Mm -hmm. Box, would you please hand them out? Sure. <laughs> as soon as I'm finished, I'll get you a cup of coffee. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, uh, and while our competitors continue to lose ground in the first quarter of 2003, only Crane Industries has made substantial gains for its shareholders and its clients in the same time period. Now, we have taken the liberty of working out a few graphs to illustrate our point. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Ethan. Uh, what, 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 what did you say? The comparative graphs. Teresa, I'd like to show them now. Of course, absolutely, yes. Um, oh, gosh, I can't seem to find them. <laughs> Well, here we go. Ah, yes, here we go. There. Oh. I, I'm sorry, Ethan. I, I don't know what's the matter with me today. My point. Uh, my, my point. My point is that the combined talent pools of our advertising and public relations divisions can do more for MPS's public image than any of our competitors. It's 2003. It's time to kick away the stale old traces of yesteryear and begin anew with an exciting new face that will increase your earnings and jumpstart your market share. Profits for MPS, profits for Crane Industries. Um, this, uh, this is no time to fall asleep at the wheel, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I just think your idea is a bit harsh. Well, oh, gee, Sam, you know, I'm really sorry you feel that way because I thought I was being pretty generous letting Ivy even spend one night under our roof. Look, I'm not asking you to let Ivy move in with us permanently. Well, I should hope not. The roads aren't even plowed yet. And she just got here last night. Grace, just give her a couple of days to get her bearings. Sam, Ivy will be fine. If there's one thing I know about Ivy Crane is she is a survivor. You know, think about... All the couples we know that have been torn apart lately. Charity and Miguel, Luis and Sheridan. I mean, your son Ethan married Gwen instead of Teresa. Honey, what did they have to do with us? I don't want to be on that long list of couples that should be together but aren't. Sam, I love you. I don't want to risk the chance of losing you. That means steering clear of everyone and anyone that could threaten our future together. Come on. Just take a little break, okay? No. No, I can't leave him. Sheridan, my mom, Miguel will be right here, okay? 
not going to go far. Go. You'll be taking care of Antonio for a long time to come. He'll be all right. Afraid of us come to pass. We know that we talked about it. We said what we were supposed to say. We would have prepared ourselves as best we could, and yet I, I know. I'm just so scared that we're never going to be together now. Never, Louise. Didn't my mother tell you? We're not. At least not yet. Why the sudden change of heart? Well, I finally convinced Gwen that it was in her best interest to stay put. Let Teresa be the one thrown out of the mansion for a change. Oh, please. If this is still about that ammunition you're trying to get on Teresa. Well, I'm going to have the goods on her any day. And when I do, she is going to be the one out on her fanny faster than you can say huevos rancheros. Look, I don't always agree with my mother's tactics, but right is right. I mean, Ethan was born here. He grew up here, and this is where I would like our children to live as well. I did raise Ethan to be head of this house and of Crane Industries. Mm, yes, just as I raised Gwen to be the perfect wife for him. You know, when I realized that I'd been tricked into a loveless marriage with Julian, I saw that my only way to revenge was to raise Ethan to take over for Alistair and Julian when the time came. Oh, I couldn't wait for him to be named president and CEO of Crane Industries because I would be the only one who knew that he didn't have a drop of Crane blood in him. I wanted Alistair and Julian to be completely unaware that the man who was running their empire was the son of the police chief, Sam Bennett. Grace, listen. With Kay pregnant and living next door to Tabitha's, I don't see why throwing Ivy out of the house is your first priority. Well, Sam, I can't seem to do anything about Kay. But I can do something about Ivy. I mean, uh, look at this apartment building right here. It, it caters specifically to residents in wheelchairs. Grace, it's in the worst neighborhood in Harmony. <sighs> You know, at least it's not our neighborhood. Come on, Sam. We lived in a worse area when we were first married. Well, that was different. I mean, Ivy is used to living high on the hog. Well, maybe, you know, it's time she had a dose of reality. She'll adjust, Sam. Look, I don't think she can, Grace. You don't think she can, or, or you don't want her to? Is that what it is, Sam? You want to keep Ivy here in the house? She'll be close to you. And if you'll check out this example, the stale, old method of advertising versus Crane's new, innovative, eye-catching style. It feels as though I'm in shock, and I don't know why. Both knew the risks involved. It's just it's hard to accept the worst case scenario. I guess a part of me just believed that the drug would work. Antonio would make a full recovery and we would finally be able to tell him the truth. Yeah. I think that's what we all prayed for. A miracle. Yeah, but we've had our share of miracles. And God's just not handing out anymore. I vowed that I would stay by Antonio's side as long as he lives. And I can't break that promise. I'm not asking you to. But we're never going to be together, Luis. Ever. Oh, yes. 
have somewhere a little more private, okay? Okay. I feel so bad for Louise. As do I. But it's Antonio my heart cries for her right now. He doesn't look like he's in any pain. Yeah. Thank God for that, at least. I can't stop thinking about all the things Antonio will miss out on. He would have been such a wonderful father. Mama, you can't give up on him. And maybe they will come up with a cure. I'll keep praying for that. In the meantime, I know how much I have to be grateful for. My beautiful daughters and my two healthy sons. It's important that you and Louise find true happiness in your lives right now. I know how much Luis wants to be a father himself. What? What is it? That's nothing. <laughs> Miguel, hijo, tell me, what are you thinking? I'm sorry, but I don't see Luis ever having children. As much as he cares for Beth, I don't think he's ever going to marry her or commit to spending the rest of his life with her. No matter what happens, he's always gonna love Sheridan too much. No, Miguel. Luis will have children. He'll have children with me. All my plans went to hell in a handbasket the night that Ethan's fraternity was revealed and Alistair and Julian disinherited him to Where you're wrong, Ivy. You see, I have it all worked out. You see, once Teresa is out of the picture, then I will remarry Julian, and then Gwen will be a great. But that still won't reinstate Ethan. Would you let me finish? Then I will persuade Julian to adopt Ethan, and then he will resume his rightful position with the family and the corporation. Well, it's a lovely plan. If it works. Because then Gwen would be right by Ethan's side and they could use the crane money and power to make the world a better place. Since when do you give a hoot about that? You don't know me as well as you think you do, Rebecca. Whatever. As long as there's plenty of cash for me. You know, the only problem with this plan is it all sounds like it's dependent on Teresa being ousted from the mansion. I mean, Teresa still is Julian's legal wife, Mother. Not for long. In no time at all, Teresa will be back in the gutter from whence she came. <sighs> Teresa. Um, well done, Teresa. You made our point much more cogently and vividly than I could have ever hoped to. See, Teresa was just acting out what I was saying. I.e., your previous ad campaigns have been, quite bluntly, a snore. <laughs> <laughs> and it's time to do something about that. <clears throat> now, we have taken the liberty of preparing lunch for you downstairs in the executive dining room, at which time we will re-adjourn and we will discuss your decision regarding our recommendations. Thank you. Excellent presentation. Yes, very colorful. <laughs> Your point was well made. We found it most original and innovative. <laughs> Thank you. I think they're going to sign with us, don't you? If so, it's only because I was quick enough to bail you out of blowing the deal. You need to wake up and do your job, Teresa, because you're not paying me enough to cover for all the mistakes that you make.
hope you know what you're doing this time, Mother. I mean, you always promise me you're going to get rid of Teresa, and yet she is still very much here. Well, it's different this time. You know, you are all going to have to continue this without me, because I need to get home to Sam. Uh-huh. So you'll be staying at the Bennetts for a while, then? For the rest of my life, if I have any say in it. And what about Grace? What about her? Um... Last time I heard, she was Sam Bennett's wife. Surely you're not going to try to break up their marriage. You are. That's exactly what you intend to do, isn't it, Ivy? Is that what it is, Sam? You want to keep Ivy in the house so she'll be close to you? Of course not. I don't want Ivy living here with us any more than you do. Then we agree. The apartment building will be perfect for her. What about the b and B? I I mean, it's close by, but at least a separate living quarters you know, from us. Sam, I thought about that, and the entire downstairs is booked, and it doesn't have an elevator. Well, someone could carry up the stairs. Oh, my God, Sam! You're playing right into her hands. Well, that is precisely what she wants, and she... Forget it. She's not gonna live next door. Look, it's not like she'd be hanging around the house all day, I Grace. think that is exactly what she would be doing, hoping to score a few points with her old flame. Well, she can hope all she wants. I think the only point scorer that I want to be around is you. Look, Sam, I know you believe that. But Ivy is your first love. And it's a love that might have lasted if it hadn't been for outsized interference. You can't forget that, you, that, you know, the two of you have a son. And don't get me wrong, it's not that I don't like Ethan. He's wonderful. It's just his mother I don't have any time for. You don't have to stay with me, Fox. Go to the cafeteria and get some lunch. No. No, it's all right. Besides, you look like you could use some company. I'm fine. Ethan. I I'm, I'm sorry that I fell asleep during the presentation. Look, don't apologize to me. All right, this quarter billion dollar deal is Alistair's baby. It's not mine. I just thought that you were a little more invested into your new career. Oh, no, I am. I... There's just been a lot going on lately. Look, I'm sorry about Antonio, but if you couldn't keep your mind on work today, then you should have stayed away. Okay, I told you I could have handled it. Well, did I blow it completely? Well, not yet, anyway. I mean, you, you heard the people from, from MPS on their way out to lunch. They thought you were dozing off as part of the presentation. Well, thanks to you. Well, I, I don't deserve all the credit. You did do the research on all the material that I used today. I just presented it. The problem, Teresa, is that you could have ruined all of your hard work by letting them see how distracted and how tired that you are. Well, you're right, Ethan. Why don't we just go down to the lunchroom together and, and, and we can finish off the pitch? I think it's better if I go by myself. Why? Because you're not at your best today. And I will not let you blow this deal. I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, Teresa. I'm just trying to earn those big bucks you're paying me. But you're underestimating my ability to bounce back, Ethan. If I just have this, this one cup of coffee, I, I'll Teresa, be fine. Six cups of coffee will not make up for you staying up all night. Look, you know, when I got home from the hospital, little Ethan, he was fussing. Well, why don't you hire a baby nurse? I don't want someone else to take care of my son. Has it ever occurred to you that maybe you can't have it both ways? What do you mean? Look, I very much admire the fact that you want to be a full-time mother to little Ethan. But I think you should resigning your job here at Crane. Teresa, you're Julian's wife. For Pete's sake, you don't need to work. Not for the money, I don't. But I need to succeed at this for myself. You know, I, I want to prove that I can be anything that I want to if I just put my mind to it. And yes, all right. You know, today wasn't my best day. But there's no way that's going to scare me off from doing something I know I can excel at. If Luis won't forget about Sheridan on his own, then I'll make him forget her. He'll have children with me. I pray you're wrong, Neil. As much as Luis loves Sheridan, he must get on with his life as if he never met her. 
He needs to love and be loved in return by a woman... A woman who wants to share her hopes and dreams with him. A woman with whom he can start a family. I'm not trying to be negative, Mama. I just know how Luis feels. Same way I feel about charity. You know, and you can't just turn a love like that off just because people tell you that you should. Which is why I have to make sure that Luis and Sheridan forget about one another. Antonio, I mean, this is the worst thing that could happen to him. I should have never consented to that experiment. Sheridan, drug. come on. You can't second guess yourself. You know, we all hoped the drug was going to help him make a full recovery. I think you did the right thing, okay? Even though it's the worst thing for us. Sheridan, sometimes you just have to take action. You know, we don't, we don't get to know the results ahead of time. Yeah, but I can't abandon him. I know that. You won't leave my brother, and I won't be with his wife. Oh my God, this is a nightmare. It's worse. A nightmare, at least you get to wake up. like it or not, you and Ivy have a lifelong connection, a son. That's hard enough to accept without her living right next door. Wait a minute. Uh, what about John and David? What about them? You share a son with David and think nothing of asking me to accept the fact that he's a boarder at your B&B. That's different. How? Is your relationship with him taking you away from me? No. No, you can't stomach the idea of Ivy living next door. But it's all right for John and David to stay there as long as they like. Now, why is it okay for your first love and not for Ivy? You're in on this with her, aren't you, Mother? You are always so suspicious. Oh, you must have inherited that from your father. Oh, no, don't change the subject. What are you up to, Ivy? Well, nothing as immoral or as impertinent as you are suggesting. Might I remind you that Sam and Grace aren't even legally married? You're splitting hairs. Come on, Grace doesn't even remember being married to David Hastings. Well, too bad for her. She is, which makes Sam legally a free man. Hmm, how very convenient for you. I don't know what you mean. Mm, neither do I. Then stop accusing me of wrongdoing. I am the real victim in all of this. I was with Sam first. Grace stole him away from me, and I deserve to have him back. Ivy, you're rewriting history. You had already married Julian before Sam even met Grace. It's a minor detail. Sam and I were meant to be together. We were always meant to be together. It, it's, it's our fate. Oh, my God. What? What, what is it? You sound exactly like Teresa. You are exactly like her. I can do both. I can be a wonderful mother to my son and the best executive that Crane has ever seen. And you don't think that that's burning the candle at both ends? What if it is? Ethan, I'm young. I, I'm smart. I've got heaps of energy, and I can do anything I want to if I just put my mind to it. And I'm not doing this to prove something to myself, either. No one in my family has ever had a chance like this. My mother, she has always worked as a housekeeper. And Luis, he's a cop. And Miguel, I don't, I don't think he's going to be able to graduate college, what with Kay Bennett carrying his child. So, I want to prove to everyone in Harmony, now, the world, what a Lopez Fitzgerald can do if given the opportunity. Teresa, I'm sure they're proud of you already. Ethan, I haven't even started yet. I want to show everyone that I can have it all. That with a little luck and a lot of determination, I can have everything that I ever dreamed of. I shouldn't even be in your arms right now. Shh. 
share it. Come on. This is different. I'm consoling you as Antonio's brother, okay? I never get like this. All we wanted was to be together. I don't know. All I know is that we can't let it ruin our lives. I want you to find happiness, Luis. I'm sorry, because I can't be happy without you. You can be happy with someone else, someone who loves you. No. Yes, Luis, please do this for me. I want you to find joy with someone else. about being your wife and living together with you and Ethan as a family. We're finished, remember? I am married to Gwen, and we do not have a future together. I can't be with you, all right? I will never be with you. 